Right, we're going to try Aquacast. Um, now, I've opened this bag and had a little play with it. Um, it does seem to work quite well. It's an alternative to resin. Well, more of um, more of an alternative to jessamineite, I would say, because it is white. It looks like plaster to mix. But unlike jessamineite, um, it's not a two-parter. Not in the same way anyway. With jessamineite, I found it a bit of a pain to mix because you've got to get it exactly right. It's got to be um, the exact right ratio of the powder to the liquid in the bottle. Now, with Aquacast, they've taken the whatever it is in the liquid that activate, activates the jessamineite and they put it into the powder, into the Aquacast powder. So all you now need is water. So it's a bit like mixing plaster. Again, there is a proper ratio to it, but it's a bit more forgiving. So I found that you could put a little bit too much water and it still works. Here's a pot I made um, a few days ago. And as you can see, that is fine. And I'm sure I put a bit too much water. I could have cleared the bubbles a bit better from around the top there. Um, that's the only thing, but it's dried beautifully. I've also found that the jessamineite pigments work in it. I wanted this to be off white, so I put the tiniest dot of brown and that's come out nicely. So that's what we're going to be playing with today is this Aquacast. We're also going to be playing with a new mould I've got. I'm sure a lot of you have got this mould. It's been out for a little while now and I have seen some really nice um, creations from it by other resin artists. This is the base and it produces that. And then this is the top, which turns it into a mushroom, which is really lovely. That will be so cute. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another base to see if I can avoid these bubbles. And also, I think I want to do it um, just bright white. I'm not going to mess about putting tints in it. And then the top I will do in, plas in um, resin, which, again, I've seen other artists do this, but I've got some ideas for playing with... Um, some glow-in-the-dark pigments and things like that as well. So this, all in all, is going to become a night light, which you'll put a, a, a tea light in there. Uh, not a real one, of course. It will be a um, battery-powered one. And then after dark, when you turn that off, these dots will continue to glow. So thought we'd have a go at that. Right, time to get messy. <laughs> go and mix up my Aquacast. Right, here's the Aquacast uh, in action. Now, I don't know whether you're supposed to wear gloves. I really should re read the label after my recent experiences, shouldn't I? I don't think so, though. I think it's pretty safe stuff. So I'm going to put some into this pot. I've already put the water in. I find that it sticks to the bottom. It's easier to mix if you put the water in first. So I'm just spooning out the Aquacast from the bag. It should be roughly one third water to two thirds powder. She says, not not um, really paying too much attention still, though, because um, it's I can tell from the consistency. Apparently you want the consistency a lot like cream. I would say that's not far off and that's why I put it in a clear pot. Maybe you can see a bit better what the consistency is like. That doesn't look like it's going to be enough. See, this is why I like this better than jessamineite. Although you end up with exactly the same results, I think. You can just keep chucking it in um, until you get the right consistency. To be fair, you don't get a great deal of work time. It does dry, cure, whatever term you want to use. Like jessamineite, it does cure quickly. You can demold it, uh, theoretically, in half an hour. Um... I'm guessing it's like jessamineite in that if you leave it in there too long, it will start to sweat. I don't know. I mean, this one, I left it in in that mould for a few days because I completely forgot about it, to be honest. And it seemed fine. Right, that's getting thicker. I'm not too worried if I mix up too much. I've got some um, jewellery moulds on the standby. I want to see what this is like for making jewellery too. Obviously, you know... It's not going to be like resin, is it? Because it's not going to be clear. But I've got a few things up my sleeve that I do want to try. This mould does take quite a lot. As I 
So this time I am going to leave it just bright white, I think. Well, it'll be slightly off-white anyway, because it's... Uh, that's quite a nice consistency. It's not, yeah, it, uh, you do get a white pigment with jessamonite to add to make your white whiter, but I think this slightly creamy white, it's pretty white anyway. A little dot more. Just trying to get this up to the right consistency. Yeah, you think about it, the stalks of mushrooms, they're kind of off-white, aren't they, on the whole, or grey, or light beige. I was going for light beige here, and it ended up kind of pinky. <laughs> That's just because I didn't think about sorting out my pigments before I mixed up my powder. So I was a bit concerned about getting the, uh, the mixture into the, the pot in time. Right. Nothing, I, don't, I really should read the back of the bag, shouldn't I? But the uh, other thing I'm not sure about with this is, do you need to uh, wear a respirator? Oh, there's a lump. Do you need to wear a respirator? I would say anything that's a fine powder, you probably should. Like with mica powder, in itself, it's, I don't think that's dangerous. But because it's such a fine powder and you could inadvertently breathe it in, that's no breathing anything in that shouldn't be in your lungs is never going to be a good thing, is it? There we go, right up to the top. I don't think this shrinks much either. So I'm going to um, leave it at that. Yeah, I've got some honeycomb coasters I've been meaning to do some more things with anyway. So let's pour this last little bit into one of these. Uh, Which paste has some random moulds handy, doesn't it? I will turn these moulds out again sometime soon anyway because um, I have got some substantial plans that I want to do with these. But in the meantime, let's try this and see how heat safe Aquacast is. I'll put a nice mug of hot tea on this later this afternoon. I mean, I did mix up way too much, didn't I? There we go. You see how forgiving it is, though, and because it's water-based, it's it's kind of easy to work with. It's it's basically acrylic, I believe, like your paints. It is as I'm pouring this. I'm finding it to be completely odour-free. Any mess I make should clean up really easily. Not too different different to cleaning up plaster really which is why I wasn't too worried about using one of my posh resin cups for doing this even though I didn't need to measure it properly <laughs> you know what I'm going to finish that off because that looks quite pretty this is what I mean you couldn't you couldn't mess about with jessamine like just lobbing bits in a pot as easily as this could you well you probably could but you'd <laughs> And end up probably wasting a lot um, with um, getting the mixture wrong. And I found it dried cured brittle. I am, which reminds me, Claire, Claire's Crafty Corner. Drew, drop me a line with your address. I've got a bucket of jessamineite still. Um, you clearly get on really well with it. I don't, so I would. I, I was wasn't joking. I would like to send it to you. Um, it may as well be used to sit here and go past its use by date and, and me not use it. I probably should persevere and try again, but I really just can't. Uh, now, now I've discovered this stuff, I can't be bothered. I do know that those who get on well with Jess might get on with it really, really well. It is wonderful stuff. Um, I've just decided it's not going to be my my thing. Um, I think I'm a lazy crafter. And anything that involves working out exact ratios, I struggle with. It shouldn't be that difficult, I know. People say, oh, it's really easy, but I just don't do maths. Um, I could mark, put marks on mugs. I could, you know, make lots of notes about different ratios and stuff. But you know what? I really can't be bothered. Um, I shall just use other things instead. Because it just annoys me that I can't do it. <laughs> Whereas this is easy. 
So there we go. I'm just going to leave all those now then. The resin part I will come back to. I will probably PP up and um, make a start on that later today. I was going to leave it another couple of days, but I have got all my mask and everything, so we'll, we'll have a go. So we'll come back to that. But what I wanted to do was see how this came out first. Now, I'll bring you in a bit. As it's curing, you can see I probably did put a little bit too much water because it is starting to, you're getting like a watery layer on the top. But that's what I did with this one in the theory that it would help to get rid of the bubbles. And on the whole, I think it worked. What I should have done with hindsight was part fill it up, tap it. I'm getting away with doing that now. To get these bubbles like this one out of the rim. Um... Yeah, I think if I did this again, I would half fill it first and do this. And I'm going to keep doing that around the top till it starts to solidify because of that. Not that I'm too upset about that because it's a mushroom, you know. <laughs> but I will keep doing that and I will get um, a little, where are we? A little stick. Let's find a little stick. Here's one. And I will keep doing this as well until it starts to solidify, which it will soon. Like I said, the demo time on this is meant to be about half an hour. Um, I'm going to leave it a bit longer. So maybe in an hour I'll be back. We can demold it. And then decide what we're going to do about that lid. The lid is probably the exciting bit. But as this is a new product to me as well, this Aquacast, I did want to... I did want to try it again. That, that and a couple of little jewellery moulds is the first time I've tried it. I am going to make a video of trying different pigments in it as well. Um, I have found so far that it is pretty much like jessamineite. Use the jessamineite pigments and you get your vivid colours. That's what I'm finding. But it's then what to do with it afterwards. Can you varnish it? Can you seal it? What do you, do? you know? What do you do? So I'll do a whole video on that at some point. Right, stop messing, Tracy. I'm going to go get cleaned up, and we'll be back in an hour to see how that has done. Just because I want to see how strong this is, and how easy it is. To... <laughs> that just answered my question. How easy it is to get the surplus off? Very, by the look of it. I've only used these moulds with resin before. They're rather nice. They're just coaster moulds. But I've gone through a bit of a phase on these stuff. Well, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? And you can just <laughs> get my scissors and poke that the extra out. That feels strong. I'm not going to try and break it. But it does feel strong. Now, as it's water-based, I would imagine it's going to be pretty heat-proof because there's no kind of chemically stuff to heat up. It does heat up while it's curing. I ought to get a knife and do this, haven't I? It does heat up while it's curing, I noticed. Not as fiercely as resin does. But it does heat. I'm try and get that bit from the back. This isn't doing my nails a lot of good, is it? Right. So that's come out really nice and clean and these extra little surplus bits are coming off really easily. Just made an almighty mess doing so. Let's try the one that's just honeycomb. Don't know what I'm going to do with these yet. I might set them in resin actually. Don't know. Don't know yet. But that does feel pretty sturdy. Feels very sturdy, in fact. I'm not going to try really hard to break it, but yeah, I think that would take some breaking. Now, the main event. Let's get this out of the pot. What I'm keen to see is how well I got rid of the bubbles around the edge this time. Oh, got a nice bottom on it. You can't beat a nice bottom, can you? Look, that's nice. <laughs> okay, let's just go around and the only thing I'm finding is this stuff comes out easier because it's not as shiny and therefore not as 
grippy onto the mould as resin is. Well, I think that's pretty good. I'm pleased with that. Let's clean it with my hand. Got a fairly neat bottom, not too much in the way of... Well, it's not bubbles really, anyway, it's just a bit of a texture. I could probably smooth that if I was bothered enough. So that's come out lovely. What I'm going to do next then is have a clean up of all this mess, wash my moulds out and then uh, we'll get on and get get my mask, my gloves and all that malarkey sorted and we'll do the resin in the lid. Right, I have measured the volume in the lid by filling it with water. It's now busy drying so I know how much resin I need to mix up. So we're going to try mixing up some translucent red resin and I've realised that I don't have any transparent types of uh, pigment other than alcohol ink. So we're going to have a go with alcohol ink. As you can see, I'm getting all my gear on. Um, also watch this space for more videos on PPE. I have been talking to a science guy, <laughs> um, a good friend of mine who works for the firm that actually made my uh, mask and my goggles and he's he's a chemicals expert um, he deals with making sure that their products comply with all the legal requirements and safety and stuff in various countries now he's told me things such as how to take gloves off safely um, there's also some stuff around gloves that I have no idea and I've certainly not seen on anybody else's videos taking them off isn't as simple as you think either there's a way of doing it and also he's given me some more information on masks and the correct usage of so um yeah i'll get back to you on all of those i think that's quite an urgent video for me to make actually so as soon as this mushroom is out of the way i will get that out to you as you can see i'm just pouring in a bunch of my usual resin and that mushroom lid takes just under 200 what are those? Millilitres? I suppose they're millilitres. It's quite a lot of resin, so I see why people charge quite a bit for these. I suppose you could make it hollow by sinking in um, another a little round mould or something inside it. That would use less resin. But either way, it's quite a lot of resin. So, uh, let's do some stirring. She says, reaching for a choice of stirry thing. We have so many stirry things now, it's ridiculous. Right, let's go for a spoon for this because it's quite a lot. Let's see how a plastic spoon does. So yeah, this is going to take quite a lot of resin. Um, it's also quite cool in my craft room today. So it might take quite a long to cure. I don't know if I want to turn the heat mat on. This is a brand of alcohol ink that I've had for a while. And it seems to be the only... There you go, that's what it is. I'll pop a link below. But it seems to be the only transparent red I've got, strangely. I must get myself some proper transparent inks, um, pigments. But we know that inks colour resin nicely if you mix them in well. Now that's going a nice shade of red. I'm sure you can see that. We're working by natural daylight today because it's bright and sunny and blinking cold outside here in Worcestershire. A bit more ink. It's quite a strong ink actually. Ooh, that's going nice. It's starting to look like toffee, like make toffee apples with. I do want it to be quite a dense colour, but because it's such a chunky piece, it will be quite dense anyway. It's not being, the resin isn't going to be stretched very far, is it? So I think that should do. So I'm going to carry on stirring this for a couple, for another minute or so. I tend to stir too fast. I'll let the bubbles then settle and then I will grab the mould. It's sat on top of a radiator at the moment, making sure it's really dry after me using it to um, measure the volume in water. Gosh, it's frosty outside. I should be glad when we're all complaining we're too warm again over here. There's no pleasing Brits about the weather, is there? Right, I think that's a beautiful shade of red. <laughs> a couple more drops, yeah, and then I'll let it stand um, 
it is going to be cold in my craft room. I've got the window open um, and my little extractor fan going. Mask and everything. God, if the neighbours look in through this window, they'll think I'm a nutter. So yeah, this is probably going to take a while to degas. It's gone. It's quite thick already. Look, um, because it's because it's a bit chilly in here. So I'm going to just leave that, and I'll see you for filling up the, the mould, and I'll show you what I mean about that lip. Right, that is. Partially degassed. I'm going to tip it gently back and forth, see if it'll help to clear some more of it. Oh, no glove, I only did one hand. Keep that hand out of the way. Give it another spritz with the alcohol spray. This little bottle's really handy, I just keep refilling it. There's a lot of micro bubbles in there, but I think it's going to be good enough. So I'm just going to pour it in and I'll pop the other glove on and I'll show you what I mean. I'm already making a mess, as you can see. Let's get a, a tissue and get that off. Um, now, it's this lip that's the problem. It goes up and under uh, more than any other mould I've got, I think. Obviously, it's like that for a reason. It's a beautiful design feature, um, so we've got to go with it. Now a little bit of a bubble under there, I'm not going to worry too much about because it's um, it's a mushroom, you know, they're going to have little flaws, they're a natural thing, but <laughs> it would be nice if I could minimise it. So this time I'm going to try tipping it around like this, as you can see there's bubbles already. I'm going to tip it around like this, so inside that rim it's getting a coat with the resin, and then I'm going to quickly go in with the rest of the resin. So I've, I've only kind of like about half filled it at the moment. Be interesting to see if this works because I know I've seen a few people commenting that these moulds are a bit a bit of a pain just from that point of view. But otherwise pretty awesome. Well, I can still see that this isn't gonna isn't gonna go completely in there but let's see if that's helped. away. Yeah, I can see I've got bubbles in that corner, those corners. Now, a lot of the mess I made was because I did this bit, trying to squish the bubbles out after I filled it right up. And as you can see, as you're doing it, it comes up into the, it comes up into the um, hollow at the top. Let's put a bit more in. Now I'm going to go in there with uh, with something to try and get the bubbles out. Right then, demold time. Excuse the complete mess I made here when I was trying to sort this out earlier. Zoomed you right in. Now I did keep, I did have a go for quite a while at getting the bubbles out of these, out of this lip, and. It, that looks pretty good actually. A few little ones doesn't really matter because of what it is. So yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We can live with that. Oh, that looks like toffee. <laughs> right, I'm going to let that air for a little bit and then we'll come back and have a go at filling in these with some glow in the dark stuff. And clearly I do need to have a clear up here. So there we go, popping the mop back through the right way. Yes, quite happy with that. Let's just see what it looks like sat on its little... <laughs> That's too cute for words, isn't it? <laughs> While we're off camera, actually, I've had a look at what else you can do with these pots. With this, well, with more, more with the um, aqua cast than anything. This was that prototype one I'd done. Um, I have just drawn on it with paint pens <laughs> and that is a heart that was also made out of the same stuff, the aquacast, which I've just glued on the front with some Gorilla Glue. 
a little bit of gold around uh, silver around there all done with pens i just thought that was rather sweet um as you know i if you've seen my videos before i'm always losing my tweezers so we have a tweezer pot <laughs> there we are anyway uh yes i'll uh, be back later when i've had a good clear up and we'll have a go at putting these these dots in in um some sort of glow in the dark medium see you in a bit okay we're back to have a look at the little mushroom lid i think that looks amazing it looks like uh it, it looks like the toffee they put on toffee apples <laughs> Thankfully those bubbles are pretty minor. Um, I'm really not bothered about those. So all we've left to do then is fill in these dots. Now what I'm going to try and do with these is uh, make them glow in the dark, as we said earlier. Because if we put a light in the little pot part, that's quite going to be quite bright coming up through the red, I think, I hope. It's going to make a really eerie nice red glow. Um, and it would be nice if the afterwards it carried on glowing a bit so we'll see I'm going to mix up I'm going to do this with ultraviolet curing resin because um, obviously I don't really want to do one wait for hours for the paint to dry turn it over and so on. I want to be able to just zap it with the um, with my light so mixing up quite a bit here I'm going to put in it Um, um, this is white paste that, well, pigment that I mixed up um, using a lot of glow in the dark powders and things. So I'm going to put some of that in there. Let's see how white that's going to be. Not very at all. Now I want it to be quite white. I just hope it's going to glow. I want it to be a bit whiter than that. I could do with some white glow-in-the-dark stuff, really, couldn't I? Anyway, we're going to put a dot of white, proper white pigment in it as well. It's going to need to be a little bit translucent. Otherwise, it's not, one, it's not going to cure properly, and two, um, I don't think we'll get the light come through it enough to light it up. So let's put one more drop of the pigment in it. bit more of me glow in the dark mix. I hadn't better put any more otherwise it's just not going to cure is it? <laughs> it might not as it is actually so I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit in a in an old mould I've got here and make sure it cures first. We are going to be painting it on in thin layers of course but let's just make sure that's going to cure actually. Let's put a bit more in and we'll have a little heart look shall we? <laughs> Let's have a little glow in the dark heart if it works. Right, let's see what happens. So, if that cures, that's what we're going to do. We'll just paint it into those dots. Um, once I start painting, I'll put it on fast forward. It's going to take several layers. You're not going to want to sit and watch me do all of those layers one after the other, are you now? So I'll show you painting on the first bit and then um, we'll come back at the end when the last coat's gone on. Right, let's see if that's started to cure up. Mm, it doesn't seem very happy. So maybe I've overdone the colours, that's quite possible. Colour. Is white a colour? Depends, doesn't it? In terms of paint, it's a non-colour. In terms of light, it's all of the colours together. Mm. Yeah, that's curing anyway, it's just slow. So, let's, this one should cure even better now because I've just put some more of the colour in it. What I might do is put some of these little glow-in-the-dark stars in amongst the top layer as well. So, we're just going to paint it in. It's not very white, is it? I think it'll be enough. Oops. God, world's messiest person. 
Okay, I'm holding this as level as I can. I want this to kind of self-level in the dot. We're going to fill it right up, so I think that will be really quite white by the time it's uh, all of the layers are in. Just got to keep remembering to remove my brush and my pot every time I swing the light around. <laughs> okay, here we go. One light. So I'm going to bring the light closer. This is that little clip-on light that I've got that fits over the, um, it just clips onto the edge of my table. It's just a big bulldog clip. It is surprisingly powerful. I'm really pleased with this. Still planning to do um, a series on you know, comparing different bits of kit and ultraviolet light is one of them. Right, let's see how let's see how that's going. Oh, yep, yeah, that's pretty much there already. Not worried if it's not completely 100% cured because obviously we've got more layers to go in, but we do need it to be a good way along the line. Because each layer is going to block the light from the layer below. And as we've got red resin underneath it, any light I bring in from the back probably isn't going to get through very well in terms of ultraviolet. Just general light will, but not, uh, not ultraviolet. Probably would if the resin was blue or purple. But red, I'm pretty sure, would just block it straight out, or the majority of it. Okay, there's another coat. And of course, because this is resin, it should end up with a lovely glossy finish on the dots. So this next coat will be my third coat. And in this I'm going to put, just going to stick a few of those little glow-in-the-dark stars in it. And when this is all cured up properly, I'm probably going to leave it overnight. I'll give it all, all a good polish. And when I say polish, I just mean um, yeah, a, a wipe over, really. Um, because it's so shiny already. I mean, so I'm just talking about getting my fingerprints off, basically. Yep, that's settling nicely. So I've got my little stars here, and I'm going to pick them up with my brush, because my brush is sticky. Because <laughs> I think that'll just give it that extra little bit of, bit of sparkle to the top layer. So just painting this around again, laying in a bit more of the white, because these these um, spots are indented in really really well. So it's actually very very easy to be reasonably accurate, as accurate as you need to be anyway. With these, okay. Now I don't know whether those little stars are going to surface enough, so I'm going to put a few more in. Just going to stick them around in that top layer. I might put a layer of clear over the top just to protect that. But I'm hoping that enough light is still going to come through from whatever night light, you know, battery powered tea light I put inside to make that glow. <laughs> 